Welcome to Tech Talks. I'm Trevor McDonald, the support team manager at Nagios Enterprises. And I'm Brian Heaton. I'm one of the PHP developers here. Hey, Trevor, I've got an interesting question for you. Shoot. Can I monitor my device with Nagios XI? Absolutely, you can. So we get this question a lot. And my device um, could mean anything. It could be a server, a switch, a router, a, a toaster, right? If you have an internet connected toaster, which uh, could happen. There's plenty of people who have come before you who have developed some kind of plugin that can monitor the device that you're looking for. And if in the off chance that it doesn't exist, uh, developing your own plugin is pretty well documented. The breakdown is kind of like this. For about 90% of things that people want to monitor, websites, CPU load, memory, disk usage, things like that, 90% or so, Nagios XI has a wizard built in by default. You can run it, you can start monitoring right away. Another approximately 9% um, there's probably a plugin out there, but we don't include it by default. There are literally thousands of plugins on our Nagios Exchange site, which is located at exchange.nagios.org. Uh, it's a community site where anybody can go and they can upload plugins that they've written uh, for anything. I mean, we've, we've seen them for uh, ATMs, for example. If you need to monitor that ATM, for example, you can go to the Exchange site, download the plugin. A lot of them come with some really nice documentation, um, some comments, some how to's, things like that. And you can uh, then bring that into XI and start monitoring. That's about 9%. For the other 1%, there's either no publicly available plugin on Exchange, maybe it's written for a, uh, another version of software uh, that you don't have. You're going to say, well, I was going to say, or maybe it's written, but it just doesn't do exactly what you want it to. Exactly. Maybe it's lacking some functionality, or maybe it's written, it just doesn't work. In cases like this, you have a couple options. One, if it's an open source plugin, and, and assuming the license allows it, uh, you can take the source, you can modify it, fix it, and a lot of the authors actually appreciate it when you do that and, and then contribute back and say, hey, it made it work. The other option is that you can uh, write your own plugin, which is really easy, actually. Right. You can write it in basically anything. Perl, Python, PHP, Bash. Anything that executes. Anything that'll execute, um, you, can, you can write your own. And it's actually really easy. Speaking of it being easy, uh, we actually have a plugin development guide yes. available at this URL that'll be right here. And that includes the things that you need to know, such as what are your return codes? And how is Nagios going to interpret those? What's your perf data need to be? Um, what does your status codes need to return? Yeah, it's not a lot. I mean, literally, 10 lines of bash and you can have a simple plug-in. My name's Brian. My name's Trevor. Thanks for joining us today with Tech Talks with Nagios.